Hopefully it's working. I'm nervous. Okay, now it says it's live. Cool. Um, okay. All right, everyone, welcome to our special product edition of Truth in Tech. We're going to be talking some of the cool, uh, useful, and wacky crowdfunded projects, along with some uh, stuff from MIT. Um, some of these are available now, some of them are not, but will be in the future. Um, so yeah, I guess we can just dive right in. Um, let's see, so the reason we, I think we started doing this episode uh, was <laughs> I saw um, like two weeks ago, or I think, that someone had put up a project on Indiegogo <laughs> that is for a 13 foot tall Tyrannosaurus Rex with Christopher Walken's head. Um, oh, yeah. <laughs> and um, yeah, so this this project actually has, I believe it's ended and um, its initial goal was $760 and it raised $2622. So uh, did you know, more than 300% above its goal, um, and the uh, <laughs> worthwhile project, project. Yeah, uh, the project was pretty. The description was pretty awesome. Like <laughs> the guy who was <laughs> the artist making it um, said, uh, "I was inspired to design and build this piece after watching the movie Queen of Versailles. I saw how rich those kids were." and their lack of creation with all that money, I decided if I could get that much money, I would make something great. <laughs> so, <laughs> this is what you're thinking. Um, <laughs> yeah, that's what I think of when I think of great. Yeah, totally. <laughs> you're only making one, and if you pledge, you can get, if you pledge $5, you can get a cartoon of the Tyrannosaurus Rex. <laughs> He's going to make a cartoon? Yeah, he's not really a, an illustrator, judging by the picture of the T-Rex on his on his uh, crowdfunding page. It doesn't mm -hmm. really look that artistic, but mm -hmm. I don't really know. Uh, it doesn't really look like Christopher Walken either, but um, but yeah, um, if you donate $1,000, you get to be the face of his next statue. So, Whoa. Yeah. Wow. Um, yeah, and if, I, but no one's claimed that one. Um, <laughs> <laughs> oh, it, it's actually, the campaign's not over. It still has 11 days left. So oh, it could get on it. Yeah. Um, yeah, and he's just, uh, he just needs basic things like piping, wood, chicken wire, towels, and paint. So, uh, you know, that's, that's one end of the project. <laughs> you can find that on Indiegogo. I think it's the only Christopher Walken T-Rex available. Um, yeah, so uh, let's see. Um, I saw news about the... The lapel camera today. What's the deal with that? Yes. So the lapel ca camera. It's so awesome. There's. I mean, everyone has now with technology. Everyone has this whole like wanting to document their lives and everything. Yeah. So this one will take a picture for you every thirty seconds of your day. Oh yeah, it's a lot. And yeah. Um, yeah. So basically. It like it's this very tiny um, camera that pins to your lapel, and they um, it captures like whatever you're looking at for the day, uh -huh. and wow. it, um, ha it it has this algorithm, um, so you can like upload all of your images to the cloud, and it will like filter through all of that. It clusters it by like color and um, then it chooses like 30 to 35 moments from the day and um, gets that to you. Oh, I didn't real. So it okay. I didn't realize it like it selected from the photos that had been recorded. Yeah, that's interesting. And so, does it store the photos somewhere or? Yeah, they store it on their cloud service. It's going to be so many photos. <laughs> yeah, I know. Well, they, you have to like pay to upgrade to have that. Okay. Um, but yeah, it says last fall that they had a goal of fifty thousand dollars on Kickstarter, uh -huh. and they raised over half a million. 
Whoa. So. That's really cool. Yeah. Um, yeah, I'm a little like, I would never want to take a picture of my life every 30 seconds. Yeah. But I do feel like from a data perspective, that would be really interesting to have like so many different people's like total life streams. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, that would be cool. Uh, yeah, I think it's called like Momoto, I want to say. Yeah. The Momoto camera. Okay. Yeah, so uh, can you buy that now, or are they working on uh, building it now? Um, I think they're working on building it right now, okay. and they're shipping it from Taiwan. Okay. Um, cool. Um, yeah. Because anyone who pledged $279 or up was promised a camera. Okay. Gotcha. Um, cool. So I have another camera one that's also on Kickstarter. Um, it's called the Neo Lucida. Um, and it's a portable camera Lucida for the 21st century. Uh, the, the camera Lucida is uh, pretty cool. It's been around since like the beginning of the 19th century. Um, and it's uh, what it does is superimpose. It uses like a prism technology to impose the object that you're looking at onto the paper that you're using to draw. So you're sketching, like you don't have to keep looking up at like if you're drawing like a I don't know a flower. You don't have to keep looking up at the flower to draw it. You're you're just drawing the flower that you see on the page. Um, oh, I had seen that. Yeah. So yeah, I guess like for some reason they stopped. Like they stopped being manufactured a while back, and no one uses them anymore. Um, yeah. And if you like try to buy one now, it's extremely expensive because they're like collectible items. Um, so these two guys from Carnegie Mellon um, decided that they would build a modern update that's really cheap, and art students can buy or make themselves. Um, and so they, yeah, they made this this updated version that's uh, it only weighs like nine ounces um, and it's foldable um, it looks really say cool. it's very slim right it's like yeah. this slim little it looks thing that like, attaches um, to the desk right exactly um, and it looks like a tiny desk lamp or something um, mm -hmm. yeah and it costs uh, 30 bucks and it uh, yeah they're they initially hoped to raise fifteen thousand dollars, and they ended up raising over a hundred thousand. Um, and that's interesting because they they initially wanted to just make just raise enough money to um, make a first round of designs um, to to buy the parts for the designs, and then they plan to open source it um, afterwards. And I don't know now if they're just going to make a lot more camera lucidas than they've planned on or what they're going to do with the excess funds. But um, it's the, this, the Neo Lucida that they've built is sold out right now. So not sure what, yeah, what the update will be on that. But it looks really cool. Uh, they had a really good video that just like was super straightforward and explained how it worked. And, yeah. Um, looked awesome. So, yeah, let's see. Uh, other robots we have out of MIT, I saw the IKEA furniture one. Yeah. Oh my gosh, I want this one. I want them to put it on my Kickstarter. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because the, yeah, so these two, they have, well, there's a couple of projects that are coming out of MIT's. Um, C sale like yeah. computer science and artificial intelligence laboratory, uh -huh. and they are working on these projects. I want them to be available to anyone. <laughs> um, so they are created the, or they've created this thing called the IKEA bot. So yeah. it builds your IKEA furniture for you. It's amazing. That <laughs> is amazing. Right. So it's based on a CAD file. Um, uh -huh. And or that like that's how it moves, uh -huh. and um, so the CAD file ha has like the piece of furniture, and puts it in terms of like the geometry and where all the screw holes are and all, yeah. all of that good stuff, and uses geometric reasoning system to like determine where all the pieces go, and then the robot does it. That's great. I mean, those damn. 
furniture sets when you get them in the boxes. It's like <laughs> I I died the one time I got like I usually like would it back in the day I would inherit IKEA furniture that had already been assembled. So the first time I got something there, I was just like I couldn't I could not figure out how to put it together. It was awful. <laughs> there were like twenty different instructions for like a shelf and I like, <laughs> died. <laughs> so and there's all um, these little right. pieces. Yeah, it's not easy. They, <laughs> no, it's not. Um, it takes a long time. Yeah, cool. That's really neat. I I mean, I would imagine this like bot would be a lot more expensive than the IKEA furniture that you buy. But That's maybe true. if like, IKEA just like sends them out or something. I don't know. Yeah, but if you know, if you all your furniture is IKEA, then you know yeah. you're using the bot over and Maybe over. Maybe like again. IKEA could just like sell them at IKEA. Oh my know? gosh! Yes. <laughs> <laughs> a, lot, a lot of like horse meat and other things. Yeah. One day. One day. <laughs> one day. Cool. Will happen. <laughs> but um, yeah. awesome. What's the other uh, MIT project? That yes, MIT has such cool things that they're working. Working on. I know. We're just gonna come out with all these amazing things that you know to help our make our lives easier. Okay, so this one is they're working on a GPS um, to like talk back to you, so interact with you oh, to nice. help you um, find the best route, like driving route, based on like um, traffic and time it will take and. Cool. Um, yeah, so they're trying to make it so that it will talk back to you and like correct you if it thinks you're not doing something, not doing something right. Be like, no, that's a really dumb mistake. You should take this route because it's faster. That's awesome. <laughs> um, so, yeah. Cool. I wonder if they're like. For it. I wonder if they were are working with the same technology that you know that app ways. No. It's this, Nick uses it, um, it's this awesome uh, traffic reporting app, like real-time traffic updates. It's, it's for, I think it's for just iPhone, but maybe Android too. Um, and it just tells you, like, as you're driving, like, this is the traffic on your road up ahead, and, like, you should take this route if you can, and that sort of stuff. Um, and it's out of Jerusalem, I think. Um, oh, nice. And I've heard, like, first... The rumor was that Apple was going to buy it. Now it's like Facebook might buy it, but I don't know. It's anyways. It's pretty uh, pretty cool app. So I wonder if like uh, yeah, if they're if MIT is using the same sort of technology to build theirs. It's called Waze. W a y s. W a a z e or W a z e. One of those oh. two. Oh. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Um, it's pretty cool. Uh, but it's just, yeah, it's just an app. So having it as a standalone device actually would, that's mounted would be a lot more useful, I think. Yeah. Which is what this would be. So. Yeah. Cool. Um, yeah, neither are available yet, the MIT. Right. Um, yeah. But they're, robots. I guess, the GPS ones are, they're targeting Zipcar, it says? Yeah. Um, so they're trying to, yeah. Do nice. do it with uh start it with Zipcar, so that makes a lot of sense because you're like paying by the hour, so you really want to maximize. Your that's exactly yep. Yeah, that's exactly what they were talking about is that because users book it based off they usually book it you know based off cost, so they right. try and fit it all within this like very short time period that they can you know for yeah. everything, and so that's kind of the reasoning behind it is to try and help them optimize the time that they have their car and be like, um, you're going to be late and it's going to cost you extra. <laughs> <laughs> cool. So you need to drive this fast to get back <laughs> and take this route. Uh, well, another useful app or project I found, this one's also on Indiegogo. Um, it's called the Blue Bee. And essentially what it is, is this, like, wireless tag that looks like a cassette tape. And it you can attach it to, like, your bag, your keys, like, a, pretty much anything. Um, and it wirelessly connects to your smartphone through Bluetooth. And um, it'll show, like, if the 
your tagged item is is within like close range, it'll show up on your Google Map or whatever. Um, and if you you can't find your phone, you can use your Bluebee to find your phone. But the coolest part is like if the Bluebee is out of range, like if you lost your bag, um, other Bluebee users who walk within range of it get a automatic alert to their phone, being like, "This lost item is here. Uh, help someone find it." So oh, it's like what? a yeah, it's like this crowdsourced network of like finding your lost stuff. Um, oh, which sounds cool. pretty awesome, especially like at airports or anywhere where it's like really stressful if you lose your bag, you know? Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So how do the Bluebee people get to each other though? Um, that I don't think they explain on the page, but uh, I don't. <laughs> they just know. get an alert, and then they kind of have to like look around. Yeah, I guess so. Um, well, it'll show that like so if you walk like by close by a lost item, uh, it'll show you on your phone map where the item is, so you can find it. Hmm. Uh, yeah. So I'm not exactly sure. What I mean, if it's just up to the blue B user who finds the item, like to return it to the person on their own terms, or I don't really know how that part works. But yeah, it did look pretty cool. Um, and uh, people helping people. <laughs> yeah, it um, it's a French project actually, um, and it, it's not doing that well on Indiegogo. I gotta be honest. It, well, it has forty one days left in its campaign. And it's raised okay. ten thousand dollars of its sixty thousand gold. So oh. I hope you know that it gets money somehow. I don't know if, if Indiegogo is the best fit for it. I feel like Kickstarter would actually be better. Yeah. Um, but yeah. Anyways, uh, I always lose things, so it sounded like a potentially useful buy for me. Yeah. <laughs> um, so yeah. Uh, let's see what else. We have here. Oh, so um, I don't know how useful this thing is. I yeah, I'm not sure, but uh, it's called Bartendo, and it's a cocktail dispensing robot. I'd uh, heard of this one. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and it basically, I guess there's this technology called precision dispensing technology um, mm -hmm. that, like, you know, shoots um, an exact amount of yeah anything or especially liquids, into a container. Um, and it, I guess it's normally incredibly expensive, but uh, Bartendo yeah. uses um, open source Raspberry Pi. Um, so it's uh, the buying a Bartendo unit is a lot cheaper. Um, and it comes with a user interface screen um, uh, and an admin screen for like so users can order drinks, and admins can manage dispensers and ingredients and recipes, etc. Um, and you can like view reports of drinks made and quantities used. Um, so for like a big bar, actually, that would probably be really useful. Um, yeah. Not like a you know if you have a really awesome cocktail bar, I don't think this is for you. But um, but yeah, if you have like a, a club or somewhere where people just like want drinks and don't really care uh, mm -hmm. so much about that artistry in them. This would probably be great. Um, and they have exceeded their goal. They wanted to raise $135,000 and they've raised $197,000. Um, People like their drinks. Yeah, they really do. More so um, than finding stuff. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I don't know. Uh, I could definitely see like a frat also buying this type of thing. Oh yeah. yeah. Makes sense. It reminds me of one thing I had seen, it was like um, a wristband that if you wave it in front, it's same kind of like technology of where it pours a certain amount, you know? And oh, so you okay. wave it in front of um, this device and then it will, you can serve yourself basically at the bar and it will, it will pour um, like a certain amount and then you can, that's how you can just serve yourself throughout the night. Oh, cool. Yeah, similar to that. Yeah. Um, well, the last one that I have um, is also an Indiegogo project, and I feel a little mean even saying it, but I just like I just was like, do people do this on Indiegogo a lot? I'm not sure. Anyways, it's called um, D Shock Ivan with your kindness, and 
essentially what it is, is this guy, this Croatian poet, got a scholarship to Tisch, which is uh, the dramatic art school uh, out of NYU. And he discovered, to his shock, that New York is very expensive to live in. And his scholarship was not enough. So he's asking for your money, and he will uh, mention you in his thesis, give you, or give you a personalized poetry night, depending on how much you donate. Um, mm. Yeah, and he hasn't, I don't, I'm not, again, I'm not sure if this sort of thing is common. He hasn't raised much of his goal. He wanted 5000 and he's raised 760 um, Oh, so, so he's raised something. He's raised something. Um, but, yeah, it just goes How to show. How is he going to mention you in his thesis? I don't know. Like, that doesn't seem ethical. Maybe about, like, crowdfunding? <laughs> I don't know. Uh, it didn't say. I think he's doing, like, gender studies and poetry, so I'm not really sure. Um, yeah, I was gonna say I don't know how I feel about that. I know I I I don't either. Although it did make me think of um, it's not really the same thing, but there's that startup that just launched. I don't remember the name, but basically it allows you to invest in people and you get returns back. So you can like invest in promising students, or I think it's mostly students, and then you get yeah, you can get um, some sort of return on investment from them. How? Based off of, like, what they um, accomplish in their lives? I think so, yeah. Um, hmm. I'm not sure. Uh, Interesting. Yes. So anyways, investing in people, uh, essentially. But this seemed a little, like, really... <laughs> uh, yeah. Like, you just want money and you're... Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. Uh... I'm not sure Kickstarter is the way to, or Indiegogo is the way to go. No, I don't think For that. so. I think like getting a job is probably the way to go. <laughs> That's what I was gonna say. <laughs> <laughs> then again, we are the uh, generation of lazy people who live in their parents' basements, according to Time Magazine. So I believe it. <laughs> did you see that the new the cover for this week's Time? I did not. Ugh, it's just one of those stupid like millennials are, yeah, millennials. Are What's wrong with millenn millennials? They're so lazy. Yep, yeah. that um, seems to be a common story over and over I again. Know. And there's never anything like interesting said. Um, and it's like been said so many like by so many generations of the generations that are younger than them. So I'm just like, eh, this is yeah, dumb. why is this a cover story? Yeah. Um, but yeah. Anyways. Uh, the kick kickstarting your college career is a, is maybe not the most uh, promising testament to the productivity of millennials, but yeah, it just doesn't <laughs> sit well with me. I don't know why. I just... No, I, you're not get you're not getting anything back. Like the whole point of these things is that you're supposed to get something in return for you. For giving, you know, like, yeah. With Kickstarter, or, you're like funding a, you know, you're funding a product that you get back, um, right? Or the community, like it benefits the community yeah, or right. something along, like it helps improve, right? Um, yeah, yeah. There's a really like the lives Indigo of people has like a whole nonprofit section, so yeah, you can like yeah. yeah. Um, so I feel but, like it's supposed to be more communal and like you're doing yeah. something for everyone else as well, right? So, just like an individual basis. Yeah, totally. Because like anybody could just do that and be like, give me money so I can do what I want to do. And yeah. Like, just, I mean, sure, like who, who doesn't want free money, but that's I know. not cool. <laughs> yeah, agreed. Anyways, um, yeah, I guess that's all we have. Yeah, so fun the Christopher Walken T-Rex basically is yeah. what we're saying. That's basically what we're saying. Um, you should definitely hop on that. Get your head on that. I mean, come on, someone should go for the th yeah, go for the thousand dollar buy-in. Get your own statue. Like, it's true. Duh. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, I maybe I'll crowd. Maybe I'll start a Kickstarter to raise money okay. to help me buy the T T Rex. Whoa, then, meta. Yeah, right. Uh, <laughs> Then I, because I would like a statue of my head on the T Rex. And Forever maybe enjoying. someone else would like to pay for it. Yeah. And that would be great. Totally. You know, <laughs> there's probably people out there that would. Yeah, I think so. 
Uh, <laughs> uh, cool. Well, I guess that's all we have this week. Um, yeah. But uh, tune in again next week for actual headlines from the world of tech. <laughs> Bye, everyone. <laughs>